This week on Crossfeed. Colts versus Bears versus churches. Take the blasphemy challenge. Kindergartner is censored. Is he a professor or a she? And beer in the Bible. Welcome to Crossfeed for this week. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out in beautiful Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley in exceedingly cold Delaware, Iowa. Welcome, everyone. You may dispense with the pleasantries, come on. Yeah. Well, Jim, you have a good week. Couldn't be better. Stimpy! I'm so happy! So, lots of exciting things happening. I'm going to start a pastor's class this Friday, this Sunday. It's got about 14 people in it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah! Cool. I've never had a pastor's class with 14 people in it. This is really wild. <laughs> and they all like me. <laughs> wow. How about yourself? That is miraculous. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, I spent Wednesday morning in the courthouse. Um, I got called for jury duty. Oh, I've done jury duty twice. Well, I didn't. I I didn't end up getting picked. So, um, in fact, I wasn't even. I was. It was really educational. It, it was kind of boring. Um, but and and I was glad I didn't get picked because I do have you know other things that I'd rather be doing. Um, <clears throat> but it was really educational. Just um, seeing. For one, walking in there, and there were 60 people in there, and they were going to narrow it down to 12. Well, actually, 13. They wanted an alternate. But, I mean, that I, I was really surprised how many people there were and what kind of numbers they were talking about. So, um, but it was it was also comforting because I had figured I had a pretty good chance of not ending up in there anyway. Mm. So... No, I had a, I did that once, and uh, they had no objections to anybody, and I was number 14. Oh, so yeah. I would have, if, I been, if anybody had been not had said no, I would have been probably been put in the pool. But that time, I was a lot of, they, they went right through, right to number 13, and an alternate, and 14, you guys can go. So that was about yeah. as close as I got. But you are in the courthouse, I'll be in the jail tomorrow. I have my jail day. And that's always an interesting uh, time to spend. Jim serves at the jail. He doesn't have a sentence. Yeah. Yes, that's true. They haven't caught him yet. <laughs> <laughs> and and next week, my actually a couple of years ago, first time I went up there, and my son was at school, and my son goes, "Yeah, my dad went to the jail today." And this kid goes, <laughs> "Yeah, my dad's there too." <laughs> 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 and my son goes, I'm sitting there thinking, so my dad gets to come home. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, man. So, uh. Well, anyway. Uh, well, I'll tell you. Why don't we start with things that are illegal and get you in jail? Well, let's start with the trial. The, the kinder, you said, censor that kindergartner. Those kids, he's driving me crazy! Man, this wasn't the trial that I was called for jury duty for. <laughs> we have, uh, this is in Syracuse, New York. Um, we have a kindergartner who had, uh, he was told to make a poster on how to save the environment. And this little boy, and his name is Antonio, um, he made a poster with several religious figures, and it said, the only way to save the world. Uh, uh, uh. He was saying that God is the way to save the world. He's the savior of the world. And they said, oh, sorry, you can't do that. Now they were trying to teach uh, environmentalism. Okay, fine. He said, all right, well, make another poster. Well, you know, it's already, when you tell a kindergartner, no, that's not good. That's not good enough. You have to do it over because what you think isn't right. You know, that's already stifling their creativity, putting down their 
um, their beliefs and stuff. But all right, fine. You know, the assignment's the assignment, and they wanted a, a certain kind of thing. So he makes another poster, and there's cutout figures of children holding hands around the world, and people recycling trash, and children picking up garbage. And on the left side of it is a picture of Jesus with one knee to the ground and two hands stretched towards the sky. And is that a picture of a church in the middle of it? Yeah, it looks like it. And it's a really small picture. Yeah. So. Maybe it's a funny looking house, but it kind of does look kind of like a church. Yeah. So, um, so, anyway, they take the poster, they fold it over so that you can't see the picture of Jesus or his name. and uh, Part they, of his name. Yeah, and they filed suit. And this lower court said uh, the court had every right to censor the poster. And uh, they appealed it to the, I don't know, I guess it was a state appeals court. And the, a unanimous appeals court said, you can't engage in viewpoint discrimination. Uh, sent it back to trial, a district court to trial trial court again ruled in favor of the district. And again, the unanimous court of appeals reversed, <laughs> stating that the religious mm -hmm. viewpoint discrimination is not permissible, even in a class assignment. And now it's back there once again. By the way, this is the one thing, little old Antonio is, uh, you know, kindergartner, he, 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 he's in junior high now. I mean, this started in 1999, and here it is 2007, and they still haven't figured this out. <laughs> They're still fighting over his poster. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, I mean, but it's an important thing, though. I mean, you know, it's this isn't obviously this is not about a poster. This is about whether kids are allowed to express their faith in school. And the thing is, constitutionally, yes, they are. Right. As long as they're not infringing on somebody else's beliefs, they can express their faith all they want. You know, as long as it's done in a respectful way and things like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. And it's really stupid because, the, the you know, they, they, they said, well, if you'd had a picture of George Washington on there, that's fine. You know, it, you, know you, you could have Julio Iglesias on there or, I don't know, Britney Spears, but that would have been fine. You know, she couldn't have Jesus mm -hmm. on there. And I, I was just like, this really stupid thing. And, you know... Look at how much money has this court uh, has 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 the, the school district spent on this, you know? And if it if it gets appealed again, uh, there was one, I, and I put it up there about a case that goes back so far that I think the kid's in college now, and it started when he was like you know third grade. Now uh, let's be reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wonder if he's the, Antonio's going to graduate from high school before this is figured out. You guys are old to your guys. You know, the the whole, as far as separation of church and state and all that kind of stuff in schools, that responsibility rests on the administration, not on the students. Now, the teachers, they can't be going around using their um their classroom as a you know bible study or something like that you know they can't be using the classroom uh for prophetizing but the kids are free to express their faith however they see fit you know within normal boundaries right uh, so you know, maybe i live in massachusetts i mean you know we're granted we're a little weird up here but like you know my my daughter's school you know, they, they had a Bible club in it, you know, and they got to advertise. Um, they had rooms where the Muslim kids could go pray, you know, and they had to, you know, they could need to go do their prayer time. They had the, the prayer mats and stuff in there. Um, you know, it didn't seem to be much of a, a big issue up here. You know, it was kind of understood, you know, what the rights are. And the, the kids have right, the rights to say what they want, you know, the, but, the, you know, the teachers really need to kind of keep their mouths shut. Um Although, there was a couple of them. Oh, there was one of them. She was a, uh, I think my daughter's gym teacher. And uh, I got to know her a little bit. And she was, you know, at least outside of school, she was real open with her faith. Uh, 
she came to our tag sale one time. My daughter saw her, and she and I got talking. And she was a very, very committed Christian woman. Uh, no, but you know, she said in class she didn't say anything about it because she could. I had a math teacher in high school that he would make little subtle comments, and we all knew he was a Christian. Um, he wasn't ashamed of that, uh, and he would. Uh, well, for instance, he said something about Christmas break. And knowing that he was a Christian, I said, uh, 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 yes, say winter break. And, and he just said, come on, we know that it's for Christmas. We know why it is when it is, why we have break there. So let's just stop kidding ourselves and call <laughs> it what it really is. <laughs> just little things like that, you know. We all knew where he stood, and but you know he he was a teacher. He was a great teacher, and and we all respected him, and um, you know nobody complained about it. So yeah, let's go from so, one court case to another here. Let's move on to our oh, where is that wonderful little court case of oh here it is uh, with Indianapolis. And uh, Fall Creek Baptist Church was going to have a big Super Bowl bash. And the NFL sent them a letter by FedEx saying, Don't you dare. It is our trademark name. You can't use it to promote it. The TV's too big. And besides, you're going to talk about God. You can't do that. Excuse and I have to sit and look at the NFL and going, don't you people have more important things to worry about? Uh? I looked at this and said, okay, if they don't go to the church and watch it on the um, 12-foot screen there, they're going to go down to the bar and watch it on a 12-foot screen. Right. But that's okay. But that's okay. Yeah. Even though legally you're only supposed to have a 55-inch diagonal screen, apparently that's a some sort of magic number that you cannot go over that. And, you know, you would think that they'd be happy to have more people watching the game, right? That's how they make so. their money. But they make their money based on Nielsen ratings, which is based on what you're watching in your home not what you go to somebody else's house or go um, to a public place to watch. But you see, but that's not true. There are 1,700 Nielsen families across the country. And that 1,700 Nielsen families determine the ratings. And they have little boxes on their TVs. So unless a bunch of those 1,700 families or people there at the church, it's not going to affect it. No, it's not. I mean, and, um, and actually, I was when I was in college. My roommate and I were a <laughs> Nielsen family um, hmm. for a while, and uh, we didn't have a box on our TV. We had a little ledger, and you just wrote down what you watched when. Right. That's the second. <laughs> that's the second type of group there. Uh, and then and we totally lied. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, like our favorite show would be on or something. And, you know, back then it was like Beverly Hills 90210 and X-Files were the shows that we watched consistently. And um, and so we would write those in whether we watched them or not because we didn't want them canceled. <laughs> so, if you know, we'd watch them if we were home. But if we weren't home and we didn't have TiVos and stuff back then, you know, we would just... We we just write in any any show that we like to watch. Oh, I was watching Batman this afternoon. Well, okay, I, actually, I was at class, but I'm going to write it in because it's a great show. Well, yeah, and, and you know, so it really wouldn't have affected the Nielsen ratings at all. No, I no, mean, no. Uh, one of my favorites with the Nielsen family was in uh, during this February sweeps one time in California. This one news station did a five day special on Nielsen families. And they had interviewed all these Nielsen families. So to suffice to say that during the time when they were setting all the advertiser rates in February, they were getting ninety they, they were getting nineties in the Nielsen the ninety fives. <laughs> oh, of course. All the Nielsen families are gonna watch it. 
<laughs> and it's guaranteed to have great ratings. Yeah. Even though the rest of the world might not be watching it. Nobody else. But the Nielsen families are, because it's about them. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Nielsen people weren't too happy about that. <laughs> I remember reading that. But, yeah, you know, I mean, I did like this going, this is just, you know, stupid. Um, yeah, they're, they're charging, what, two bucks to pay for the snacks. Um, you know, okay, they, they church said, okay, we'll take it, we'll, we'll, we won't call it a Super Bowl bash, we'll call it the big game. Um, no, 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 it's too big of a screen. Um, and I'm just sitting there going, you know what? This is broadcast over the public airwaves. Who are you to say can't show on public? You know, it's not like a, uh, a, a movie that you go out. And then, yeah, you you know, technically, to show a movie in your church or something like that, you're supposed to have a distributor's license. Right. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to have a license to do that. Um, no Which way. isn't that tough to get, by the way. No, uh, CCLI actually will do it for you. Now. Oh, well, we had, uh, one time we wanted to show Cinderella, the Disney um, show, and uh, we we piped it through the the video card in my um, old laptop computer. No, it wasn't even a laptop. Anyway, um, we piped it through there onto a, into a projector and put it up onto a, like a, the old film strip kind of screens, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, just cause it was just movie night at church kind of thing, invited the community. And, um, it was really, you see, I mean, we didn't have to pay anything for it or, or anything. It was just, uh, you had to, they said, you just can't charge anything for it. So we made up a big bowl of popcorn and had some lemonade or something like that. And, um, and we didn't have a huge turnout for it, but, you know, it, we didn't have to pay anything for it. It's simple enough to get these things. But the NFL is saying, no, nope, sorry, you can't get a license for this at all. Right. And, you know, it's it'd be different if you taped it and then were charging money to raise money. But, I mean, this this mm-hmm. was live. I mean, this, this was it, it, the, the public airwaves. You know, it's a group of people that are part of the public. And uh, yeah, I, I think the, my understanding was you just can't rebroadcast it, right? Um, you know, and the um, you know during halftime instead of watching ugh, Prince uh, or the, as I like to call him the artist formerly known as Sign, um, you know, <laughs> um, the uh, uh, um, you know during his um, concert there. Yeah, you know, they were going to show a, a video by, you know, featured Tony Dungy and Lovey Smith talking about their Christian faith. And, yeah, I just think the NFL overreacted. And and, and this, by the, I guess they, they gave churches all across the country a hassle about it. Uh, Christianity Today had it, that, you know, several of them. And there, there's a poll right now on, on Christianity Today, you know, does your church do a, a Super Bowl thing, you know, regardless? <laughs> and, you know, they asked a couple of pastors about it, and they said, yeah, we read that they sent this letter to that church. We haven't heard from them unless they're, you know, until we hear from them, we're going to do what we darn will please anyway. Um, see if they're going to do anything. You know, I was watching the news the next day, and uh, in Des Moines, I think it was, or Cedar Rapids, something like that, um, they had one of the local theaters was showing it on their screen. Well, that's probably bigger than whatever this church was showing it on. So I don't know. I've been in a few churches. They they could rival it. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely okay. right. You know, I mean, uh, uh, it's it's kind of crazy when they start throwing this stuff out. Uh, okay, but just 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 to get off the subject a little bit, what did you think was uh, which which of the commercials did you did you like the most? Oh, <laughs> rock paper scissors. <laughs> I threw paper. <laughs> I threw a rock. <laughs> that cracked me up. <laughs> now that's comedy. So I, I can't remember. There, there's one of them that really, really got me laughing. But yeah, I can't remember which one it was offhand. It was, it was one of the Budweiser ones. Oh, I think it was the auction. The auctioneer doing the, the wedding. Oh, oh yeah. I kind of like that one. And uh, although I wonder what happened to the Apple commercial. I, I don't know, and there's now they're saying Beatles are going to show up on Valentine's Day at the iTunes store. But yeah, there was no Apple commercial. Apparently, it was just one newspaper reported it, and it just kind of 
spread all over the place, this yeah. rumor, and it turned out to be totally not true. Yeah, the next day they so. announced, uh, you know, they did the announcement that they got it all taken care of. But, uh, yeah, I kept looking for the Apple commercial. Uh, yeah, well. so, so okay, what does that do for me now? Because, let's see, I got the global warming prediction right, and I got the, I, I predicted the Colts to win, but I blew it on the Apple commercial. So you're doing better than Pat Robertson so far. Okay, so then I'm still all right. I have a pretty good track record. <laughs> we got a pretty good track record there, buddy. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. We talked about I think we both like Budweiser commercials and stuff. We thought they were good ones. Well, how about some Budweiser with your church service? I there. thought this was so cool. I thought it was awesome. I love this. No. Okay, you got to understand though. I'm kind of a fan of the emerging church movement. Okay, I I, I rather like it. Uh, um, and of course, you're even you're you're, you're part of the postmodern generation, so this probably even speaks to you a little bit more. I've I've actually thought about doing this, but I just don't have the time, um, and and probably not the personality to really pull it off. But what we're talking about, there is a church out in St. Louis called The Journey. It is affiliated with uh, the Southern Baptists. And uh, they have a... uh, Now, I've heard churches doing coffee houses. But they have a thing on, uh, I guess, once a month or something like that. It's called Theology at the Bottle Works. And they have this brew pub, and they sit around, and they drink beer, and they talk about issues ranging from racism to modern art to controversies of like uh, um, to uh, embryonic stem cell research, and uh, then they invite them to come to church on Sunday. Hey, God, my brilliant! I, the, the, the Baptist Church is a bit annoyed with them because you'll remember that um, they're teetotalers. They are completely against... Uh, anything having to do with alcoholic beverages and they're doing this at a bar and so people are sitting around drinking beer and whatnot uh, while they're discussing these things but I looked at this and said well gee where did Jesus go you know he didn't hang out at the temple in Jerusalem (laughs) when he went there he shook things up but where did he go he went on to Galilee to Samaria. I mean, he went to find people where they were at. Right. You know, of course, of course, you got to remember though, for, for, for Baptists, the Hebrew word for wine is grape juice. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's the same word that talks about people getting drunk with it. Right. But, you know, I mean, I just read this. and I mean, I just... I love this this pastor. I mean, he says he he got out there and he didn't have there wasn't a uh a, 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 a you know he go out and start this church and he goes to open mic night open mic nights for musicians and he approaches strangers and said, "Hey, you want to come to this church? I'm starting in my basement." What a wild! I'm sure people are going, huh? Yeah. So I I just can't imagine some of our guys, you know. I mean, especially the real high church ones going to the music night and going, hey, you want to come to the church? You know, I'm starting this a week. Man, I would love to have a Bible study in a bar, except for the fact that cigarette smoke really bugs me. Well, but, I mean, otherwise? You know, I don't know if they're actually doing this in a brew pub or if it's in a something that they're setting up. I don't know what the bottle works is. Uh, oh, in a back room with Shafley Bottle Works. Yeah, it's a works. back room. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he they kind of set it up in there. Um, well, of course, now, in, in Massachusetts, it's illegal to smoke in any indoor facility. They don't care if it's a bar well, or tavern. See, then I could do it. You know, uh, or you could go up to, like, uh, in Northampton. They've got the Northampton Brewery, and uh, one of my favorite places to eat. And, you know, they have this beautiful garden room out back. Uh, you could probably, you know, rent, you know, rent a room in it, and, you know, for the day, and go back and, and have it, See, and have your discussion, and no smoking allowed. In that I wouldn't room. want to do that though. I'd want to just like get some tables together right in the middle of things, you know. Yeah, that would be cool. And so that way, people that are kind of sitting around, 
you know, you can kind of, they're welcome to throw in their two cents and, you know, get involved in the discussion too. Yeah. I just think uh, you could have, uh, I think it's a real neat outreach. I, I just, you know, yeah. it's going where the people are. Uh, it's at probably asking questions people are wondering about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a, a kind of a postmodern outreach up here during Lent. Uh, we're sending out 5,000 cards to our 5,000 closest neighbors, and we're calling it the God Questions. And questions that we're going to answer or ask are, is Jesus really God's son? Is the Bible really true? Uh, does God really want me? Can I really have a new start? And climaxing on Easter with, what happens when I die? So what are you doing with these things? Yeah, we're, well, we're taking out newspaper ads about it. I'm writing up press releases about it. We, we sent, we're sending out uh, a direct mail campaign to 5,000 houses around the church. Cool. Advertising all of this. That's awesome. So uh, I've been praying for 50 people to come. Yes. And it's really cool today because my, my 20-something daughter, she hadn't heard about this. And I was talking to her on the phone. I told her the question. She goes, wow. Because you know, Dad, she goes, I, I wish I was closer. I, I'd want to come to that. She goes, I got a bunch of co- people at college I talked to, and they ask questions like that. I said, you know, except the fact she lives in Western Massachusetts, 100 miles away. She goes, I, I, I'd love, to, I'd love to be talking that up. Because those are questions that kids are asking all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, I, I talk to people on the internet, um, various discussion forums and stuff, and and we talk about just all kinds of stuff. And as long as you can keep it civil and, and you know, you need you kind of need the right group of people or, or, you know, the right sort of established community in something like that so that people respect each other and you don't get name calling and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, we throw ideas around and we disagree with each other and we support our um, premises, but we respect each other and, um, you know, and, and even though we disagree, we, we listen to each other and and just kind of throw ideas around and stuff. And, you know, it's it's just a great way to... I've Lately, we've been having this discussion about um, about what motivates Christians and talking about um, that, you know, so often the, there's this tendency to motivate with the law and that you can't do that. That's not what the Bible's all about. It's any motivation we have comes from the gospel, knowing that God loves us, and, and it's just a response to that. It's not because you oughta. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, I got the comment, well, you know, it's too bad more Christians don't do that. Don't, you know, start with the gospel. And that was coming from an atheist. <laughs> so. Yeah. Speaking of atheists... Um, and you talked about those guys being really respectful on your your group and, you know, things like that. And uh, here's a couple kind of postmodern atheists that are a little bit less respectful. Um, names are Brian and Kelly. And they have what they call the Rational Response Squad. I guess that's their podcast that they do. And uh, yeah, really pushing podcast. for uh, uh, atheism. And uh, they put up a thing on YouTube in which uh, they tell you to take the blasphemy challenge. And so you videotape yourself and post it on YouTube saying, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in anything. However you want to do that. And just to find out, you know, what's God going to do with you? Don't make me destroy you. So one of them is, my name is Chandler. I've come to the conclusion that alongside the fact there is no Santa Claus, there is no Easter Bunny, and there is no God. So without further ado, I deny the existence of the Holy Spirit. Or, my name is Joel. I deny the Holy Spirit as well as God, Jesus, Buddha, Zeus, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, SpongeBob, the Pope, Santa Claus, Mother Mary, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, Optimus Prime, all the saints, and Spider-Man. Something's wrong with you. Really. Although I don't know how you can deny the existence of Optimus Prime. <laughs> I look at this and I, I'm looking at, you know, even if you deny the the existence of, um, you know, of God or, or the Holy Spirit or something, you know, 
Buddha, Muhammad, Joseph Smith. I mean, these are actual people. I mean, historical people. And, you know, so is Jesus for that matter. Now, you can deny their significance or, or, or that they are who they claim to be or, or whatever like that. Of course, Buddha, Buddhism isn't really a theistic religion, so, um, you know, you can be an atheist and a Buddhist. Right. So. But, it, it, but it's uh, an interesting, uh, you know. Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. You know, Pascal had his famous equation, you know, believe in God. Because if you believe in God now, it's not going to hurt your life. And, you know, if you, and if you wind up being wrong, you haven't lost anything. If, believe in God. If you, fly, if you are wrong, you haven't lost anything. If you're right, you've gained everything. On the other hand, if you don't believe in God and you're wrong, you've got serious trouble. Maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out. Mm. So, you know... They, they actually address that at the end of the article. Um, he... Uh, they said, do they worry that the rhetoric and antics might land up in hell? No, because hell doesn't exist, Kelly said. Even if there was a one in a million shot that hell existed, would they still be so unconcerned? Brian's response, that would stink, huh? You know, what struck me about this is just that this sort of, I mean, these guys are giving atheists a bad name. I mean, I know a lot of atheists that, while they might snicker at this, they wouldn't say, oh, yeah, you know, go, go be really nasty to the Christians and, you know, and, and throw it in their faces and all this kind of stuff. I mean, this is just rude. You make me sad. So, uh, you know, I... Uh, <laughs> well, two things bother me. Uh, yeah, well, uh about it. Uh, one is, uh, you know, one, one thing I think is just sad is he was raised Catholic when he was 13. He said he became born again. He said he prayed to Jesus. Jesus was his best friend, and I don't know what happened. I wonder what happened to this guy to make him turn to walk away from that faith. The other thing that, that really upset me, though, is this, that um, uh, he's received hundreds of death threats from Christians using decidedly unchristian language. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I remember one time uh, when, when I used to have time to, to play on the internet forums, and this guy put up this message, why should I believe in your God anyway? And I responded, and I also responded with, with the gospel, and uh, eventually went to law gospel. But he responded to me, and he said he got like over 80 responses what he wrote and I was the only kind one. Oh, good grief yeah yeah hello he, you know you look at this these people are this is just calling out and saying look if Christianity is such a big deal prove it and if somebody attacks them for it threatens them or whatever that's the equivalent of when um, when those uh, those Muslim cartoons and they had all the rioting and we're not violent. I'll kill you. You know, that kind of stuff. Yep. If Christians act like that. What does that say? That's, that's embarrassing. Right. And, and, and if, if, if anybody did that, that is watching this shame on you. How could you, you owe him an apology right now. Really? You know, when Paul, and then you need to confess your sin to God. When Paul went to, to Athens and he was in distress because he saw all these idols and stuff, he didn't stand up there and, you know, jump on the people and started saying, you know, damn you all to hell. You're looking at all these idols and you're worshiping them and you're turning your back on God and believe me this day God's going to come get even with you. No, he finds the point of connection. He says, I, I, I saw this altar out there that said to an unknown God. Um, and what you're worshiping is something unknown. I, I'm going to make known to you. 
And, you know, and he, he, even though he was, some laughed at him, others came to believe. Uh, you know, what would have happened if, you know, to kind of deal with this and say, you know, I, I'm really sorry you people have this direction. You know, this, this, this type of attitude and things. And, you know, I'd love to really, you know, have a, a substantive dialogue with you about, what, you know, who God is and what God has done. But that kind of stuff is just never going to help. No, no, it's just it, that's just going to further entrench him in his, well, his beliefs, right, or lack thereof. Although well, I find, beliefs. yeah, I, I find uh, you have to believe even more. I think to be an atheist, I find it easier to believe in God. Yeah, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I don't either. And then there's our buddy John, or Jane, or whatever. Let's uh, just call him the professor on Gilligan's <laughs> Island. I'm not intending that to be derogatory, but it's just easier for um, for for dealing with this. Now, this is interesting. This is a, 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 a Spring Arbor College uh, out in um, Michigan, and uh, they have a guy there. Uh, John Nemchek is his name, and he is a professor, and he is an ordained Baptist minister. And apparently he's been having transgender issues for his whole life and has uh, been wearing a wig and a dress in his classes. And I don't know if it says that he's been setting up to have a sex change operation or not. Um, I don't think... It didn't indicate that. I don't know. Uh, He's been there for 16 years and um, and it took him two years uh, to... uh, fire him, uh, and they did it finally based on a, on, a, on a new statement that they made, which uh, pa- faculty persist with activities that are inconsistent with the Christian faith may be fired. Um, now, what's really interesting about this, uh, for Dale and I, is that uh, there was an anonymous comment on this one, and the, the guy said, it took me two, two years to be fired because of my quality of my work and my consistent Walk Christian walk, which you know got me to want you know we don't know if it's really him or John or not. And Dale asked if John would be willing to be interviewed by us and uh, come on the show. And John, I want to make that to you myself. We would love to have you. Please, uh, if you want to, email us at crossfeednews uh, at gmail dot com, and we'd like to have the opportunity to sit and, and interview you and talk and get your side. Uh, Dale, what was his other comment he made? I can't, re- I, I can't ever find it. Here, I've got it up here. Um, uh, all right, I said, if this is John, openly unrepentant sin is not what most Christians would consider faithful. I'm not saying you don't have saving faith in Christ, but it sounds like you're really struggling with a particular facet of sin. Nothing wrong with that. That's part of being a sinner. But when you stop struggling and accept it as part of your identity, that's a serious problem. And we're talking about unrepentant sin. And then he responded and said, There's no sin in accepting and living how God has made you. I praise him for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139. My living out of my true self has made worship more precious, God's God's presence more manifest, and the fruits of the Spirit more sought after and transparent in my life. Maybe the world needs more sinners like this. Hmm. And so that's when I invited him um, for an interview. You know, oh, I, I see why it's not showing up. Why? It was marked as it was marked as spam for some reason. Ah, okay. I was wondering why it wasn't coming up. I, I, I noticed some of my co- some of my articles I post get marked as spam, and you have to approve them. Uh, I got them. I got them fixed now. That shouldn't happen anymore. Okay, if anybody okay. ever posts and your comment doesn't show up. Um, just send me a, there's a contact thing right there and, uh, there now it's up there. Okay, good. I didn't see and that. so you can, um, if, if you get marked like that and it's just, it looks for certain words and, and, and stuff, just send me a note and I can sort of mark it as not spam. So, you know, I, okay. I struggle. Okay. With this. 
we had a young girl at my last church, and she was transgender. Thought herself more as a boy. She had her hair cut real short. Uh, she came in t-shirts and jeans. She carried a wallet, not a a purse. Um, but you know, I don't think people thought two things about it. You know, uh, because, you know, girls can get away with that. They can get away with having short hair, wearing a t-shirt and jeans, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, not yeah. carrying a purse, you know, if they want to. I mean, there, it's, there, it's almost an, an you know, I, to be honest with you, I didn't realize she even, she was a, 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 not a, not a member, she was a friend of one of the kids in high school. And, uh, I didn't know she was hit you know, struggling with, with with those identity issues uh, until, you know, she'd been there, coming there about six months, and she and I got talking about it. Uh, and then, uh, uh, actually, she introduced me to her girlfriend. Uh, and then, you know, but up to that point, it never really occurred to me. Right. You know, yeah, but, girls wearing boys' clothing is not right. considered abnormal. No, and, you know, to a certain extent, I, I kind of feel for John. Because, you know, here he is, you know, again, if he was female and he was showing up to, you know, in, in more male-oriented clothing. Yeah, I was in a restaurant and, you know, the, the waitresses were all in ties with long sleeve shirts and ties. I mean, yeah, we're all in pants with long sleeve shirts and ties on. And again, nobody thought two things about it. Uh, you know, so I, I, I almost feel it's, it's, there's a double standard there. Well, except he's referring to himself as Julie Marie. Well, that's and wears true. A wig. So, although I don't know, is is wearing a wig the same as having a girl having her hair cut short? I don't know. But <clears throat> I mean, really, though, what we're looking at here, and 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 to answer your question, Mister um, Nemechek. Just because a person is um, a certain way, you know, some people are born alcoholics, They're alcoholic from birth, and will be alcoholics if alcohol never touches their lips. Just because, if you know, an alcoholic by definition is someone who goes out and gets drunk. That's binger. An alcoholic is someone who, when they start to drink, they don't know when they're going to stop. And um, so if they never start, they'll never have a problem. But it's just one of those things that certain people are more susceptible to that and, and have to um, really watch themselves. And it's, it's it's a real struggle for them. They're just easily addicted. And for some people, those um, those areas of temptation are chemical. For other people, they're biological. You know, we all have different things that we struggle with. But, and and that's just a result of the fall. We are fallen people. We live in a fallen world. We are conceived in sin. I mean, they've, um, I think I mentioned this on a previous show, but, you know, they've found um, that babies, uh, twins and, and multiples in the womb will fight. And I mean, aggressively, not just kind of bumping into each other in the womb. You know, it just shows that we're sinners from conception. And so consequently, there are going to be certain sins that we're going to struggle with, and different people struggle with different sins. Now, I got to say, my heart goes out to you, because I don't have that struggle, and I would hate to have that struggle. I can't imagine that. Um, you know, the things that I struggle with do not turn my life upside down like that. And, um, and I'm very happily married. And so I can't imagine what it's like to go through that. But the answer is not acceptance because the Bible says it's wrong. The Bible says it's sin. And while, you know, 
regardless how you feel about it, I, I wish the Bible hadn't said that because that would make a whole lot of things a whole lot easier when, you know, when dealing with people who, who struggle with this. They would have to struggle. But the reality is that's what the Bible says. That's what God says. And since you're a Christian, it's something that you can't just set aside. But you know what? There's counseling out there. There are um, there's organizations out there that will help um, with this. You may have heard of the Love One Out seminars. Um, I know that Focus on the Family, for one, that's one particular organization that had a lot of, of resources, counseling, um, and and just all kinds of stuff. And there's there's other groups as well. They're probably the most prominent, though. Um, I'm sure that if you would Google ex-gay movement. Um, they deal with gay, lesbian, bisexual, transsexual, and all that. Um, you know, the first step is to acknowledge that yes, the Bible says it's in it, therefore it is. And so, um, while it's a very difficult thing to have to deal with, it is something that has to be dealt with as sin. And the first thing is to acknowledge that it is sin and that God is, you know, just like that kindergarten poster. Jesus is the only one that's going to save the world. It's a it's a hard situation, and I part of me wonders what would have happened if you know he just did the transgender dressing at home, when where nobody could see him. Uh, if mm-hmm. um, if he didn't start the estrogen therapy, I think that's for me it's where you know a large part of the sin starts coming in is you know physically you know changing what God has done. Um, of course, I, I often wonder what would happen if I had somebody who'd gone through a sex change operation and became Christian later on. The world has changed. Well, I don't think I really want to go there. <laughs> no, that void. There's a discussion question that they can talk about down at that uh, bar in um, <laughs> St. Louis. I think That's I'd, a really good I think question. I'd, what do you do? I think I'd want a couple of beers before I started discussing that question, too. <laughs> yeah, I think so. This is just tea, herbal tea at that. Go. This is just water, tap water at that. I had, uh, <laughs> tonight we were learning how to do a Latin dance, and uh, we were doing this thing of walking in Europe. A what kind of dance? A Latin dance, oh, as a Latino. Okay. And we okay, were got it. supposed to be doing this kind of rocking walk, and I, I wasn't. I I learned one thing: this white ball has no rhythm at all. Okay, just just forget <laughs> it. <laughs> I just I just don't have it, and um, and uh, so I'm trying to do this, and I turned around, and she goes, "Do any of you need help?" I said, two Coronas would probably help me out a lot." <laughs> <laughs> So we think we're going to have my church is going to sponsor a Cinco de Mayo party now because. <laughs> <laughs> and I said a little bit of salsa, and, uh, did some chips and salsa, and a few Coronas. I probably do this rocking step okay. Boy, no control. <sighs> On that note, I think we should call this a night. <laughs> yeah, we probably. All right. Um. Get an invitation, and um, I, I've mentioned this before. Every visitor at CrossFeed, every you know, you're all correspondents, and so uh, send us your news stories, post them up there. Um, you know, if you've got a audio or, or video um, comment or or story, and send it to us, and if we can use it, we will. We'd, we'd love to. We want your feedback. Yes, so, um, so speaking of feedback, where did I put that? To email us, oh, yeah. To, to email, email us, us, you can crossfeednews at gmail dot com. No, no, oh. wrong. Or is it crossfeed at crossfeed at crossfeed at gmail gmail dot com? And that's the phone number. I had it sitting here. <laughs> Great. Well, this, it's two zero six three three nine something. I'll just put it across the screen. Okay. So so look at your screen. It's it's right there. You see, it's right there. There's the number. It's right over there. <laughs> and, uh... 
Yeah, you can always announcements. call me that. Um, number one, the Bible study that came out this week is the last CrossFeed Bible study. Um, I just don't feel like doing it anymore. And we're going to, it's getting kind of old. We've been doing them at our church in September and just looking to do something different. So uh, if somebody else wants to pick up that ball and run with it, we, you know, send us a note, crossfeed at gmail.com. And, um, and, and we'd love to have somebody else do it. But I'm just, I'm running out of ideas. Uh, I found, and it was kind of interesting that really, out of all these stories that we do, and I mean, such a huge variety of stories, there's about two dozen Bible verses that, um, that basically cover all these different things. And I find myself going, keep, going, keep on going back to these same um, places in the Bible. Not just verses, I mean, some are chapters or whatever, but um, passages. So it's getting kind of repetitive, but, I, you know, if somebody else wants to do it, I'd love to have you. Speaking of no more, um, we tried out the, the Palm version, and I haven't gotten much feedback. I don't know if anybody's using it. Uh, so if, if somebody out there, we've got like three subscribers to the Palm version. And so if somebody out there, if you're using it and you really, you know, you value it, um, send us a note and I'll continue it. If there's somebody out there, I mean, it's not that tough to, um, to convert it, but it, it just, it takes up a lot of space on the server. And um, so, but if, you know, if somebody's using it, well, I'll, I'll keep converting it if, if, if you need it in that format. Um, so just send us a note. But if I don't get any feedback, then I'm just going to cancel it. And, um, and also, I have an announcement that um, something else that I did this past week, and that is I started up another podcast, or not just I, my wife and I started it up. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm truly blessed to have a wife who's willing to podcast with me. Um, and that podcast is not a religious podcast whatsoever. Uh, it's called Tech Talk for Families, and we talk about technology news and have uh, video game reviews and, and uh, just different techie kind of stuff uh, with, that involve um, stuff that has to do with families. You know, we're not generally going to talk about stock prices or the latest corporate mergers or anything like that, but we talk about, um, you know, your, your kids using iPods and, um, you know, stuff like that, the uh, digital cameras and, uh, oh, cell phones that have built-in GPSs so you can keep track of your kids and, you know, just all kinds of stuff that apply to families. And so you can find that at techtalkforfamilies.com or just pop over to any podcast directory and uh, you find it there. Check it out. We've got our first episode up there. Um going to make some changes for the second episode. I think that, you know, it's one of those things that as it goes on, it gets better. So, um so if you if you thought the first episode was mediocre, uh, hang in there and see what you think of the second episode too, because um, we're just we're going to keep on improving it. We're doing it a little differently than I've done before. It's available as an enhanced podcast too for those of you with using iTunes, um, or there, I guess there's a few other services out there can that can also handle enhanced uh, podcasts. So I want to let everybody know about that. If it starts off mediocre and gets better, when is this thing going to start getting better? <laughs> Crossfeed? <laughs> well, yeah, you see, my wife's a really great editor. Ah, okay. She's <laughs> probably working with editing. her instead of me. Probably does the job. <laughs> so she, everybody she's have really a, good at making me look good, you know. Good. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. And uh, we will see you next week then. God bless and goodbye from Boston. Night. God bless you, everybody.